Oh hey, what's happening there YouTube? It's Brian House here for Housemade, and today I'm gonna make a quick video about firing and tuning the Apollo Forge. This has been in production now for over a year. We have hundreds of them out in the wild, and I have now gotten some feedback, natural feedback from the community about uh, its purpose and use. 90% uh, of you are very good at firing it, tuning it, making it burn hot and fast and efficient. Uh, and about 10% of you are struggling with finding the right settings. So that's, uh, this video is for those 10% that want to uh, really get the best out of their forge. And there's, uh, in my head, there's two reasons uh, to use a device like this. One is to forge weld, okay? And that's, uh, you know, welding pattern, welded steels, whatever you might be doing. Uh, getting your interior of your forge hot enough to heat a piece of steel or two pieces of steel to where when you apply pressure, you can get those two pieces of steel to stick together, okay? And you're going to run about 22 to 2400 Fahrenheit, somewhere in there, okay, to make that happen. Also, if you're not using borax as flux, which I don't prefer, I like kerosene, uh, you need to run a richer environment inside of the forge. This is where the problems start, is that people start running too much propane because they're used to a Venturi burner and they're running it at eight to 10 PSI, which is really not necessary with the Apollo. I forge weld at four PSI, okay? Four to five PSI, five at max, okay? And I'm gonna show you how I tune this machine to do that work. I'm gonna use my ears and my eyes, okay, to make that happen. Not a PID controller, not a thermocouple, not an infrared controller, okay? I'm gonna do all of this with my ears and my eyes. And then the other portion of this is that just straight up forging, right? Where you wanna heat up steel to the point where you can manipulate it with say a hammer, power hammer, or press. And uh, this machine does that quite well. And a lot of people do that all in the same forging session. Let's get started with how I start at zero with an Apollo Forge, fire it safely, and get it up to working temperature. Okay, we're gonna start at ground zero here with uh, the forge. So this is literally a cold forge, no uh, heat inside of it, and it's not even plugged in. That's the first step. I'm gonna take my extension cord and I'm gonna plug in my blower so it kicks on and starts functioning. Okay, so now that the, uh, the blower is running, we're gonna hook up the propane. Before we hook up the propane, we're gonna make sure our ball valve is closed and that our needle valve is all the way turned to the right or the off position. And we're going to plug in the propane. Now we're over at the propane bottle. We can turn the propane bottle on, okay? And at this point, uh, we don't, we're not registering anything on our gauge. I have to stop right here and make sure that when you built an Apollo or a ribbon burner that you have a hose that does in fact have a regulator on it. That's what this device is right here. And the hoses that I recommend, the, there's a dial on the regulator and a gauge so that you can read how much flow is coming out of this tank. If you don't have this set up, you need to have this set up in order to properly tune and fire your Apollo. All right, so let's dial this up to about one and a half to two PSI. And one and a half to two PSI on this gauge is a very small tick mark, okay? Each one of these big hash marks is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. We really need just about that much propane. Okay, this is just for the initial firing. Okay, so let's take a quick uh, look at what we got going on here. Propane tank is open. We have turned the regulator to one to two PSI. That means propane has flowed through this hose up to this valve here. This is our safety solenoid. I'm gonna do another video on the safety solenoid. And the propane is sitting, literally stopped at this ball valve, okay? Now, even if I were to turn this ball valve on right now, uh, no propane flow would actually occur, and that's because the needle valve is fully closed. All right, so that's just something to keep in mind. We have flow from the tank all the way up to the hose to this red ball valve right here, which is, which is good. All right, real quick, let's have a conversation about the air. So when I first fire my forge, I like to have it somewhere in the middle. And you're saying, Brian, how do I know where middle is on this thing? There's no indication. 
Um, so I'll turn it all the way to the right, which is going to be in the off position, okay? And I'm going to kind of gauge where on and off is. This is my first starting point, okay? I'm going to go ahead and dial it all the way to closed. And yeah, it takes a little bit of time to get there, okay? Because this, this is a gate valve and it takes uh, quite a few turns to get to close. So now I know it's closed. Then I'm going to go all the way to open. Three, four, five, six, 40, 41, 42. So about 42 quarter turns to get there. So I'm gonna go back one, two, three, four, 19, 20, 21 quarter turns back. Now I know I'm in the middle. It sounds exhausting and it is the first time. After you've done this and you've fired it and you've kind of learned where things go, you don't have to do this every time. Okay, this is just kind of giving you a baseline feeling for how much air is gonna be flowing through at mid grade. Then when we get into the tuning portion, you're gonna see how I'm gonna tune the propane to the air. Okay, so our air is flowing at about 50%, our gate. Propane is at about two PSI. Ball valve is closed, needle valve is closed. We're gonna open the front door of the forge and I'll go over the hinging system uh, in another video and the launch pads and everything else. Don't get distracted by that. Uh, we're going to open the front door and we're going to open the ball valve. Okay. And again, remember propane is now just flowing up to the needle valve. It's not flowing past that yet because we haven't opened it yet. So what we need is air flowing at all times. Propane on two PSI ball valve needle valve closed. I'm going to grab my uh, handy dandy lighter torch here. This is what I use to light my forge. Just a simple uh, propane torch. I'm open this up, fire it, get some flame going. And now I'm going to hold my torch in the opening of the forge and I'm going to slowly crack open the needle valve. I'm going to wait to hear the ignition. Now you can hear it struggling a little bit and that's because I needed a little to apply a little bit more pressure from the regulator on the tank just to give it a little more flow. So just make sure you're looking at both the you're looking at the pressure gauge off the tank because if it seems like it's struggling a little bit it might be. What I'm hearing is, is a disrupted flame inside this forge. And that's because my air fuel mixture is not correct, okay? I'm gonna give you a second so you can listen for yourself. Hear how that sound, it's like not an even burn. It's a very disrupted flame. We're gonna do that tuning work and I'm gonna show you, get, get you, bring you in a little closer so you can see exactly what's going on. So you can see that flame looks pretty good in there, but the flame is disrupted, okay? It's burning pretty hot. I'm running, right now I'm running at about two PSI, and I'm not gonna turn any dials on the regulator anymore. I know I'm going pretty good there. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn down the air slightly. Just, just crank the air down just a little bit. That's why I like the gate valve, because you can really adjust it. Now, with your ears, you can hear. It's becoming more stable. It's, the flames are not jumping as much, and they're becoming more stable. Now, watch, watch what happens when I dial back the needle valve. I'm at full open on the needle valve right now. I'm gonna just dial it back slightly. It was about a quarter turn on the needle valve. Look at the difference in the flame, okay? I'm gonna open it up again a little bit more. And you can see the, di the difference in the colors coming out of that burner, okay? You've got a light blue in the middle of those cones, and then you got blue and purple all around it, okay? I'm gonna turn the air down a little bit more. Look at what it's doing. You can see the camera is set so that it will not auto adjust to the color. So this is what you're seeing in real time. 
turning the air down some more. I'm about right there. I'm going to turn the propane down a little more. And you can hear the forge start to become in tune with itself, okay? Where the flames are flowing at a nice rate. They're not, they're not being disrupted at the tips. You can see it's a nice even burn all the way across. And this is where we're gonna sit at for doing normal forging work. Once I close this door and let this sit for about 10 minutes, the interior of this forge is gonna be about 1800 Fahrenheit, okay? Where I, that's where I want to be doing manipulation of steel. Not welding steels together, but just manipulating steels. Meaning I'm going to get it to a, say, cherry red color. And I'm going to be able to hit it with a hammer, power hammer, or press, and shape it. Okay, this is where I want to be for forging. I've turned the forge off so I can just talk for a hot minute here. No pun intended. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about now increasing the PSI so that we can forge weld. Okay. We're going to apply all of the exact same principles to what we just did with forging temperatures to forge welding temperatures, but we're going to do that with more fuel. Okay. So we're going to increase the PSI to four or five PSI and then balance the air out to it. So um, to, I'm going to just leave it where it is to, to fire it now. Two PSI is all you need to fire the forge, okay? There's two PSI. Burning beautiful. Now I'm going to crank my tank to five PSI, okay? And look at the difference inside of that forge now. Look at the heat coming off of that burner. The burner itself doesn't really require a whole lot more air because what we want is a more rich environment inside of the forge, meaning there's combustion happening all the way to the exterior of the forge and about three inches of dragon's breath coming out from the face of the forge. And when I close that door, it's gonna to go to about three to four inches underneath the door, okay? If you have fire coming out above your door or around the 50% mark and up, your forge is running too rich, okay? I'm just gonna go ahead and open up just a little bit more air here, and you can see how fast this is getting so hot. I'm standing here now with this door open, and I'm looking inside this forge, and I can tell that it's about 2,000 Fahrenheit already. We've only had it lit for about 10 minutes now. Not even, maybe five to seven minutes. And you can see, this is where I wanna be for forge welding. I literally just changed the PSI on the dial down by the propane tank. I just upped it to five PSI and added just a little bit more air to get a nice even burn. Close this door. And you can see by closing the door, now it's so quiet, you could be having a conversation next to this. This is another reason why I love a ribbon burner is because it is not loud like a Venturi burner, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna give you a little bit more of a visual representation. I got the lights down here so you can kind of see this. Um, Forge has been running for about three minutes. I would say it's probably somewhere around 1600 Fahrenheit or so by the color. Um, and I am now running at two PSI. This is a good temperature for forging, but not forge welding, okay? But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase on my dial down by my tank, that red knob, I'm gonna turn it up to five PSI. Now watch what happens. A little bit more flow here. What do you see? You see a little bit of dragon's breath coming out from the bottom and the top, okay? And that is how you know you're running more fuel. Literally the visual here, you're seeing more propane being combusted outside of the forge chamber, all right? Now, if I raise the air, I'm just dialing up the air, 
add a little bit more air pressure I can really dial in just minute changes dial in how much fuel is being combusted outside of the forge meaning that the inside of the forge the atmosphere in there is being completely consumed by fuel okay so if you're doing forge welding this is an ideal environment to do that because you're not going to build up a whole lot of scale now i'm going to show you what it looks like when you got way way too much propane and i've seen these people do this okay i'm still at five psi okay i just cranked over the needle valve and i'm going to add maybe one more psi to this that's six psi what you're doing is, is you're really combusting now outside of the forge chamber. I'm gonna just push that door closed just a little bit. This is a real rich environment on the inside. Now, some of you may be good with this. I personally don't think this is necessary, but if uh, say you're doing something with copper, you wanna forge weld with copper, you might need to do something like this. I'm not an expert at that, so I don't really have all that data. But what I can tell you is, is you're wearing away the steel around the face of the forge and the door itself. Um, so my preference is, is to dial back the fuel down to five. Okay. Go down to five. And you can see right there that I have dialed it into the point where I have a little bit of flame coming out from the top. That's okay. And about three inches of dragon's breath coming out from under the door. That means I'm a nice fuel rich environment inside of there. It's getting nice and hot for forge welding. Probably gonna get up to, uh, oh yeah, we are, uh, we are getting real warm in there. Uh, up to 23, 2400 Fahrenheit already. What I have told people, and I get this question a lot, what's the BTU of the ribbon burner? Uh, I don't know, I don't have that data. But what I can say is that with the Apollo, if I'm forge welding and I'm at zero, say room temperature, it takes me about 15 minutes to reach 2400 Fahrenheit. What the, that equates in BTUs, I'm not sure. Um, maybe somebody can enlighten me on that and help me with that at some point. But, uh, but yeah, this is where we're running and this is how it should look if you're forge welding. Now let's dial it back to two PSI. You can see all of that combustion is now happening on the inside of the chamber, not the outside, which means it's a little more lean. I'm gonna open it up and just see how that flame looks. Looks pretty nice. And she'll drop back down to 1800 Fahrenheit so that we can continue forging. And when I'm done, I'm just gonna turn off the ball valve. Okay, a couple things I have to mention safety-wise, uh, never fire your forge in an enclosed space that doesn't have fresh airflow. Um, I, I just don't know how many people understand that propane does, when it's combusted, it produces carbon monoxide, which can kill you and or make you very sick at the very least. So just be aware that you see me in here working and I'm firing this forge inside of an enclosed building between shots, I'm opening the garage door and I'm blowing in fresh air with a fan, okay? So I'm not in here, you know, uh, getting dizzy and all of that. So just keep that in mind. Also, never walk away from a forge that has been fired or is running, or even at the very least, if it's been running and it's still hot, ensure that you have like a good five to eight foot radius around it that is clear of all combustibles. I just uh, I've heard horror stories. Nothing with the Apollo. I feel very strongly about the Apollo being a safe forge. That's why I built this thing uh, with quarter inch steel plate and all of that. It's, um, it feels like a very safe forge. When I see other guys using, you know, open-ended forges that are blowing fire out like two feet and all that, I feel very um, concerned a little bit about that use of that device. Um, but even with this thing being as safe as it is, uh, when I'm done in the evening and I've um, been firing it and it's still hot, I roll it into the middle of this room and I leave the doors open and I let the fan kind of, you know, blow out some of the heat and get it down um, to a, you know, sub 1000, maybe 800 degrees or something like that. Just in the off chance that something were to spark and catch fire. Some of the most experienced blacksmiths have, incur have uh, incurred damage 
and or fire damage and or lost their entire workshops because they were careless. They were tired, they were careless, and, um, and unfortunately their shop caught fire and burned down. So just keep that in mind when you're working with this kind of equipment. You, you know, there's a lot of danger involved. Um, in, the, in the future, very near future, I'm going to be making more Apollo content, okay? I have these in stock now at my website, housemade.us. If you decide you want to build one of these, you can go there. You can buy the plans. You can build it yourself. Uh, you can buy just any piece or part of it for the most part. The work that I do here at Housemade, my sole mission now is to keep people making things and to get people outside of their comfort zones, okay? Um, this project was something that I thought I would never ever try. I, I was always worried about fire. My workshop caught, my old workshop caught fire and it really, um, you know, messed with my head. And um, the guys over at the Working Hands podcast had this thing called Make What You Fear Challenge and that's how this all started. I wanted a forge, I just, you know, didn't understand the, how it all worked. Plus I was scared of it and scared of fire. So there was some mental challenges that I had, but then also from an engineering standpoint, I felt like the forge in general, there was a lot of work to be done um, in development wise in this as a product, because um, you can see that how thick the walls are and how big the ribbon burner is and the size of the chamber compared to other forges. Also, I point the ribbon burner uh, 90 degrees inside of the uh, forge itself, the furnace itself, and that's, different than a lot of other devices out there. And I can answer all those questions in like I say, a frequently asked questions video. Uh, but the hundreds that we have out there, I think we've sold like 400 of these now, um, up to date anyway. Um, and probably six or 700 ribbon burners. Uh, all of them that are out there in the world, they are burning and burning very hot. And I will say 95 or 98% of the people who are using them are very, very satisfied. The other smaller percentage are people that are just running them too hot. Uh, they're not educated, which is the point of this video. I wanted to educate them on how to fire this thing properly and get it running efficiently. And, and, and that's the other thing we need to talk about is the efficiency side of things. I get to ask that all the time. What's the difference between this and a Venturi burner as far as the efficiency goes with propane? Honestly, I thought maybe we would get a 20% or so increase in efficiency. And now I'm thinking it's closer to 40 to 50% efficiency. Um, and that's because I've got a couple of these in production environments and education environments. And I'm talking uh, about every other week with the people who are running those facilities and, and we're getting some numbers now. We're starting to see the data come from them. Because they were running traditional forges before and they're running this now, they're in a unique position to tell me what the difference is in efficiency. And uh, some people have said up to 50%, which is really encouraging because I know it's not the cheapest forge on the market. I get that. Um, it's not cheap to build, but when you take into consideration that it's 50% or around there more efficient than the other burners, you're making up for that difference in cost of propane and fuel. Um, but anyways, I'm blathering on about this. I'm very um, excited to see where we go with this in the future. I am working on another prototype version of this. So now that we have sorted out the heat, you know, the air propane mixture delivery system, I am now experimenting with different size forges for different purposes. I've built a big two burner forge called the Helios. I built that for Baker Forge and Tool. They are using it every day and uh, they've ordered a second one from me so that they can burn two in tandem. They love it so much. Um, all, they're one of the people who have explained to me the fuel efficiency differences. And um, also uh, we're building a smaller sort of version of that forge with just one burner that kind of changes the design so it's built more for traditional blacksmithing or hammer making or axe making. Um, that was a collaboration that I did with, I am doing with Ryan over at Gnome Hammer Forge in Michigan. Uh, he's making all of our $100 hammer products uh, that we're pushing out on Housemates. So if you're not following me on Instagram or Facebook, you should because I don't post all the time here on YouTube, um, the short form content anyways. 
Uh, I just feel like it gets lost in the sea of things. But uh, anyways, guys, I'm blathering, like I said, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to make another video, frequently asked questions. We're going to go over the safety solenoid. I get that question a lot, and we're going to do a bunch more Apollo content because I am moving into more of a traditional blacksmith uh, environment myself. I am really loving, loving, loving working with hot metal and not just in a knife uh, space. I'm working in other, doing other things. So to me, this is a really important tool and I think everybody should have one. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for the love and support. Truly appreciate you. I hope to see you in the next video. My name is Brian House and this has been Housemade. Oh!